Come now, let's test ya. Best you come with me. I'll be your mother, you know no mother me. I'll bring you honey, the sweetest honey tea. Come Hi everyone, welcome to the Divine View. Um, this is a talk about love, religion, and spirituality um, just in time for Valentine's Day. So if you don't have a Valentine, we got five for you right here. And just for those who don't know, who are probably like joining in for the first time, Divine is a collective facilitating conversations of divinity, religion, spirituality, relationships with the church, and a lack thereof from a critical queer, trans, and BIPOC lens. This project aims to have more nuanced dialogue about religion and other spiritual practices. So thank you so much for joining us. We will have information um, below about how to get involved with our organization. And we're gonna start this conversation with a game of two truths and a lie. And I'm gonna go first. Um, my name is Monique and I sang in the choir. I did not have sex. Damn it, I, just, I feel like I just told, I told myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. That's staying in. <laughs> well, I just made this easy for y'all. This was the icebreaker. So um, this was a test. Um, I waited until marriage to have sex for the first time. And I have never dated anyone who wasn't Black. Which one? It's the lie. Your lie is that you have not dated anyone who isn't black because surely you haven't had sex before marriage. I think the lie is that you didn't have sex before marriage. I agree with that one. Yes. <laughs> I also think that is a lie. Wow. I mean, obviously it was a lie. So. <laughs> But I will tell you that um, while I did, I did um, engage, I did fornicate, I, for the longest time, like I could not, when I would think about sex, like when I would fantasize in high school, I would never go through with it. And when I did, I would always fantasize that I was married when I was having sex. Like that's how deep it was for me. So there you go. Now that's out in the public. <laughs> um. Uh, BC, you're up next. Awesome. I don't know how I can follow this, but I'm going to try. <laughs> also, y'all, sorry to interrupt, but Monique, did you share your pronouns? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, my pronouns are she, hers. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, y'all, I'm BC. My pronouns are she and they. And here are my two truths and the lie. I don't believe in marriage before sex. I am, all, wow, that was my partner. Sorry about that. Um, I'm always in love with everyone and I only date cis lesbians. What do y'all think? It's the first one. The first one's a lie? It's mm -hmm. not. Oh, damn. Well, tell us until after we all get <laughs> Oh, <thank you. laughs> It's that one. I would say the last one is a lie. Okay. That you only date cis lesbians. Okay. Yeah, I agree. The last one is a lie. I am objectively saying that the last one is a lie. The last one might be a lie. Um, and there's a story to accompany it. A friend of mine who's also non-binary reminisce all the time about how simple life was when we were limiting ourselves. So, and how much more accessible spaces were when we did it. Um, and I sit with the fact that things were so simple when, when I was dating cis lesbians, but the reality is they weren't simple at all because I was in relationships that were far, that didn't complicate my gender as much as they should have. Um, and my gender identity was never uplifted in those relationships that I was with, with my infamous Bronx based cis lesbians. Um, so in short, I feel like that has taught me that more nuance does mean 
things are more complicated, especially in romantic relationships, but it also moves us closer to authenticity and anybody who I can be my authentic self with, um, I'm trying to be with. I love that. Who are you popcorning it to? I'm going to popcorn it to Dev. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Dev, my pronouns are they, them, and here are my two truths and a lie. Um, I've, I've only ever been in one relationship. Um, my parents were not married when I was born, and my paternal grandparents have been married for 50 plus years. I think the lie is that you've only ever been in one relationship. What about your parents? The lie is your parent. 50 plus. The lie is your parent. Yes, the lie is my parents. My parents <laughs> were. After Bash went. <laughs> my parents were married when I was born. Um, but, so, okay, so my paternal grandparents have been married for 50 plus years, but the, how they met is actually like super, like straight out of a Nicholas Sparks book. Like, so my grandma and her, my great grandma were on a train, right? And then my grandpa was on that train, but he was with his um, Air Force buddies. Like they were like transporting across the state to their base. And he saw my grandma and just walked up to her and started talking to her and like asked like how she was doing and just started talking to her. And then my great grandma was like, no, like don't talk to my daughter, like get away. Um, and then like miraculously they were on the train a whole separate time and they saw each other again and then my grandpa like asked her out and then like got the phone number and then like the rest is history and, and then they were like married at 18 kids at like 19 bought a house at 20 and then they've been together ever since <laughs> and so when I hear their story I just think like wow that was such a like it seems so simple for them. Like they just like got married, bought a house, like all this stuff, like it's crazy. The heterosexuality of it all. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Stories like that, that renew my faith. They take my faith away. I can't look at somebody for 50 years, like the same person. I'm so distracted by the fact that, like, your grandpa had game. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to popcorn it to? Oh, my bad. Um, let's do Sebastian. Um, hello, I am Sebastian. They, them pronouns. My two truths and a lie is I was in a vicious love triangle at the end of my high school and early college days. Um, I was ghosted by my last relationship seven months in, and I dated someone on the internet for 13 months. The lie is that you were ghosted. I feel like the lie is the vicious love triangle, but I feel like there's like just a specific detail making it a lie. Like I feel like something close to that did happen. I think it's the lie is the dating someone on the internet for 13 months. I also think the lie is dating someone on the internet for 13 months. The lie was dating someone on the internet for 13 months. And I was going to say that before Deb answered, so. <laughs> you cheated. <laughs> okay, low key though, I honestly didn't, I wasn't really sure which one was the lie. <laughs> I feel like I've mentioned the other two for you, but we'll go into that later. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the one that stands out the most is the ghosting because that kind of like fucked me up. It was like, it all started when I was working as a perfume vendor at Macy's, at the perfume counter at Macy's. I was one of those annoying salespeople. Would you like to try this perfume? And this person worked at the hair salon, like literally around the, cor around the corner from where the perfume department was like, doing hair and one time like 
out of nowhere, he just like came up to me and I got a perfume sample, said it would smell good. And I was like, and I thought he was really cute. And then never saw him again. Well, I did see him, but I just never talked to him again. And then like a week later, he came back and like said if I wanted to go get drinks with him and his coworkers. So I said, yes. And then things just escalated. It was like very spur of the moment. Things happened too quickly. And then, yeah, just like, uh, like some like I started noticing a shift like five months in and then it just like carried over for two months of like him kind of like ghosting me or like not communicating back or not texting back and back then I was like I was a very obsessive person so like this preoccupied me and my time a lot um and then so yeah by like the seventh month he like I had not spoken to him for like three weeks like no formal breakup, no anything. And then he just texted me out of nowhere, like we need to talk. And we met at a Panera. He gave me my late birthday present, which was a dinosaur pin for my favorite dinosaur. So I was like, okay, weird that you're still like giving me a thoughtful gift from like back, cause he's, he was from Florida. And then he was like, this isn't working out. I know I could have done better, but I still want us to be friends. And like with everything else, like we're like, okay, we'll be friends. And then again, ghosted me, never saw him again since then. I'm sorry, that's horrifying. What I will never understand is like the person who initiates the let's remain friends conversation being the one who's like the reason why y'all are not friends anymore. Like that, say what you mean. I swear, I think I would have rather heard that than just being ghosted because I thought I love this person and I still want to keep him in my life. And then it took me like, what, another year and a half to realize that ain't shit. <laughs> and Ra, you're the last one, so. I was supposed to say, wow, well, I'm gonna have to popcorn it to myself. No, I'm joking. <laughs> All right, so here are my three very truthful statements about myself. Um, I fell in love with a church friend I used to facilitate workshops on abstinence and celibacy. My parents got married after three months of dating because the Holy Spirit told them to. Oh, also my name is Rai and I use they and she pronouns. That is not the lie. <laughs> I, can, I can see you preaching abstinence back in the day. So I think that's true as far as the lie. What was the first one again? Um, the first one was I fell in love with a church friend. I think the first one is a lie. It could be the third one, but I think I'm going to go with the first one. The, the story about your parents is a lie. Yes, I agree. I think the parents falling or is it falling in love or getting married after three months? Getting married after three months. Yeah, I think that's the one. See, from what you've told me about your parents, I feel like that's true. So I think the first one is the lie. <laughs> My parents did, in fact, get married after three months. Um, and they just celebrated their, I think, 18th wedding anniversary three days ago. Um, <laughs> um, also, yeah. Um, the lie was I fell in love with a church friend. I've never been in love before. And I think, unfortunately, also, yes, it is true that I used to facilitate abstinence workshops, also gave a sermon um, on resisting sexual temptation that was just very <laughs> shamey and mean. Um, but yes, the story um, about my parents getting married after three months is so wild and also so, I was about to say so beautiful, but I don't know, that's for them to decide. Um, <laughs> So basically, yeah, I like to say that I'm the reason why they met each other and why they got married. But every year that goes by, I wonder if that's true. I think that both of them were using me to get closer to the other. So my for context, this is my stepdad. So I was like present for this whole love story. And my dad at the time was, um, when, if I'm saying my dad, I'm referring to my stepdad. Um, he was a deacon at the church. And he often worked in the children's ministry. So I knew him as Deacon Kitchen, never pronounced Deacon correctly. And I would always like see him after church and like say, hi, Deacon Kitchen. Like, oh my gosh, he's my favorite. 
Um, turns out that at that point, my mom had already heard from the Holy Spirit that that was her husband. Um, I did not know that. Um, he had also heard from the Holy Spirit that that was his wife. Um, and fast forward, it was like November 20, I mean, 2002. Um, someone, I can't even remember, she just told me because we were talking about this, this on their anniversary. Basically, someone finally helped him shoot his shot with her. Like, gee, you too old to not have game to do it yourself, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, and they were dating. They both knew that they were like, this is who I'm going to marry. But they were too scared to tell the other one because they didn't want to sound ridiculous. Like they didn't want the other one to think that they were tripping. Um, they didn't want to be embarrassed, you know. So they kept going along. And then um, I think my dad is the one who admitted it first. Like the Holy Spirit told me that you're going to be my wife, which I'm so happy my mom heard that as well. Because if this man who has been married twice already and has like two kids said that to you, you would be like, gee, I heard about y'all. Um, <laughs> but she heard it from the Holy Spirit too. So she was like, correct, facts, no printer. And one day they knew that they were eventually going to get married. And my mom didn't really care about weddings. Mood got that from her. Um, but she like, long story short, they were watching the Super Bowl 2003 and they were just like, so we gonna get married or what? And they were married six days later. Um, and I was the flower girl. Um, but also I think that story would be sounding cute mainly because they're still married 18 years later. Earlier probably didn't sound as cute. Um, but yeah. It sounds cute until I realized that like, because of that, my parents don't think dating is biblical. Um, and I say this all to say that I don't know how to date and dating itself was demonized. So uh, pray for me. Uh. I just want to go on record and share that while I knew the answer to this question of your two truths and a lie, I just wanted the world to believe that you had a crush on them. <laughs> I wanted someone from your church <laughs> to watch this and be like I knew it it was I had crushes on people at church I've just never been in love with anyone but I, yeah I've had crushes on people at church yeah yeah that's all I knew was people at church <laughs> I just that's didn't know how to biblically act on said crush still don't uh, <laughs> um so fun fact everyone the reason why we're all here together today well, the way that this was initially um, discussed was because a few months back, um, BC, Bash, Deb and I, we were like having a conversation um, that led to us joking around about, yo, we need a dating app for virgins. Um, and if there was a dating app for virgins, it would still be so expansive with so many options because, you know, um, and I think, Monique, let me explain it for you, because you were not there, and you got pulled into this ridiculous conversation somehow. But yeah, because think about it, Monique, though, because you have, you know, the virgins like you who are waiting until marriage. Um, <laughs> you have the virgins who, um, especially like thinking about virgins who like grew up in the church, um, outside of the ones who are waiting until marriage, there are some who like just recently realized like, oh, maybe I'm not abstinent. Maybe I like am not going to be obsessed with like sexual purity and but they're not like hopping out and hopping on the first situation um but then you also have like born again versions bash brought up um then you also have the versions who don't want to be versions but are so traumatized by that upbringing that now they're like either too scared to do to do they don't know how to do to do they don't know how, they ain't got no game uh <laughs> <laughs> there's like you know so many <laughs> options and then maybe like two versions who don't want to be versions who like don't got game they can link up on this app and then be like you know um what are your thoughts about this app money do you think we could be successful I'm here for it I personally think that we should make this um a divine project because <laughs> I feel like there are so many, like, even, like, when you were talking about, like, how dating is de demonized in your family, like, there are so many people that dating is demonized, or even just, like, sexual experimentation, so being able to link up with people who are coming from that, maybe that same, like, mindset could, like, I don't know, like, that could, that feels like if you're coming from similar backgrounds, you might be able to just fall in love real quick, like, just, you know? Oh, my gosh. 
Is anyone else going to sign up for the app with me? I mean, I think it would be a little dishonest for me to sign up for the app, but I would support it. I would send it to people. I know snakes, though, and I know some snakes that would get on the app not being virgins, not really um, actually at all lying within any of the categories that you presented, just to be snakes and try to find virgins. So, I, and we talked about this too. I'm like, how do you account for the people who are seeking virgins and come and lie to get on the app? Because there has to be a way, like, I don't know, are we giving them a lie detector test when they sign up? Like, what is the truth? A BuzzFeed survey. We gotta gatekeep virginity, y'all. It's necessary. That's so true. I didn't even really think about that. Like people who fetishize being with virgins. My other thought with that too was like, because I feel like some people might be like, well, there's Christian dating apps. Like those are automatically like virgin like apps. But it's like, I feel like if we had this app, it'd be interesting how we'd market it. Cause you'd be marketing it to like, a wide variety of people and it wouldn't necessarily need to be like faith based but like but be like faith faith friendly like we still like support everyone but it's not specifically like an app that's for specifically people who like have a faith or believe in um abstinence absolutely also, I just want to say those Christian um, dating websites are not inherently for virgins, honey. Anyone who knows church folk would well enough. They are for some of the judgy people, but certainly there's people on Christian Mingle that's been mingling before the marriage. Okay, they've been mingling, tingling, jingling. Hello. Okay. Let's pause for Kenyatta because the episode needs to be called Mingling and Tingling. <laughs> Noted.